Genesis 1 and 1. Are y'all there? It says, in the beginning, are y'all there? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form. That word right there, form, is the word confusion. It's Hebrew definition for that word is confusion. Or better yet, mixed up. The world was mixed up. There was an earth here. There was a, there was a sphere here. In the beginning was not the beginning of the actual making of this world. The world was here. It was just in chaos, confusion. Oh, y'all, y'all. There was a world here. If it wasn't a world here, how could the spirit move or hover upon the face of the deep? The earth, the globe was here. It was just in chaos, meaning, meaning chaos, meaning things were not in their proper place. This is Satan's warfare to get things out of their place. Are y'all there? Creation is perfect timing. I'm going deep now. I'm just going to go here. Creation is perfect timing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? When God began to create, he began to call. Now, scientists have found out that you are moving, blinking on and off. When you get down to the finite part of you, the atoms and molecules, you are light blinking on and off real, real fast. Amen. Everything is moving. Everything, this, it looks still, but if you can get to the finite of that, you'll see that this is moving. The atoms in these things is moving. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Creation is God causing this thing to stay in perfect timing. So that it could be a speaker. Amen. Are y'all, come on, come on, come on, get your mind up, man. This religious stuff, get your mind up. God ain't afraid of your thinking. Amen. You should have learned some science, even though a lot of it was lying. But, but listen, um, every, so what God began to do was begin to cause things to come into alignment. Say alignment. alignment. Alignment is timing. Getting everything in its perfect time. Are you understand what I'm saying? Now, Satan's goal is to corrupt, pervert through getting things out of its time. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Everything, a creation is everything doing what it was designed to do at the right time, which is harmony or light. That's what harmony is. Are you honest? I'm, 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 I'm going to break it down. Darkness is, is the upsetting of timing, which creates disharmony like a band, like this band up here. This is darkness. I'm going to show you what darkness is. Like this band, like, like we up here playing, we all playing the same song, but what if we was playing it at different times? I was playing slower than him. He's playing faster than me. Even though we playing the same song, you would not understand what's being played. It would be chaos. That's Satan's goal, is to get you out of time, get everything out of timing. This happened before, and God had to come back in through creation and bring everything back into alignment of timing. This is why Satan has his people messing with the earth and messing up the sky and messing up, uh, messing with the clouds and up there flying uh, uh, chemtrails and messing with the weather. Why? They, they get stuff out of timing. When stuff gets out of timing, it, 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 it causes, um, it, things begin to be upset. It messes with the perfect order of things. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so this is, this is the disharmony that Satan is bringing in the last days and you got to be careful that you don't get out of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, how do I know I'm out of time? Fear. When I get out of timing, fear. Because whatever's not of, of faith is sin. So my job is to stay in belief. So my belief keeps me in time. What it, what it, listen, what is timing? It's, what, it's, it's, it's creation. It's everything staying in its proper place. Talk to me. It's everything staying in its proper place. But when I get into fear, I get out of that. And I begin to, uh, I begin, and, 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 and I get disunity, disharmony 
I've even heard music before that I knew was satanic music just because it was just out of, it was something about it that was out of, it, was, it didn't have the right feel to it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, the goal of the enemy is to get us uh, uh, to get caught up in his sound, his movement, his, his spirit, which is, that's why everybody that you talk to now, if they're not truly rooted in Christ, it's like something's wrong with people. It's like something's wrong with people's mind. You telling them and they can't get it. You telling them and they can't, like they can't even see the truth. You saying the truth, they can't hear the truth. Why? Because they have a different tune. They can't hear what you're saying. Come on, talk to me. It's not that the word ain't going forth. We're preaching more than we ever have, but people are not hearing it. Why? Because the spirit of the world or chaos is stronger through everything they receive from music, movies, uh, everything they into is causing the spirit of chaos and they stay in disharmony. Disharmony is darkness or fear. But God is causing us, he's not the God of that confusion, but of peace. So that's why you don't fit with folk no more. You keep trying to fit with folks that's in darkness. It's two different, you playing a song at a different speed and they just hearing it at another speed and y'all can't get together. How can two walk together except they be in the right timing? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Come on, say timing. See, see, the, see, our God is a precise God, a God of precision. He's so precise, he's a, he's a blue scientist mind, the precision of how the earth is the, the, the right, this the correct degree from the sun, that if the earth was in one degree closer or one degree this way or even tilted to one degree, it would cause us not to have life by a degree. Precision God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And this is what this is why scientists uh, uh, they know it's a God. They, they know there's a God because nobody could 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 do what is this is not these 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 mathematical improbabilities could never happen. It could never happen that life could be on this planet without there being a creator. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, so God, so the God we serve is a God of precision. Now, 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 let me go back because I want to, I want to bring this, I want to bring this into where you are before I go back to Genesis. The Bible says, now, now, now if, it, if this wasn't true, then certain statements in the Bible could not be made. The Bible says, before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you. But it also says, I knew what you, who you should be. And, 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 and to give you a future and a hope and an expected Expected end. How could God say that if he didn't, if he wasn't precise? If my life was not already precise, precision, in other words, everything in my life is already lined up. This is why all these things can work together for my good, because all these things don't stop his precision. All the stuff I'm going through don't stop his plan for me. If anything, it works together for my good. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, we're dealing with it. Listen, we're dealing with a creator. A creator is, doesn't think like, if you were creator, you would understand what I'm talking about. Creators think outside the box. If you don't know anything about music, uh, if you've ever heard country music, country music is straightforward. Don't, 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 just straight, just straight, this is straight, straightforward. It doesn't take a lot of ability to do that. Even some of this music now don't take no ability. But our God is like a like jazz. He could get he could get the. The same message of the country music, he gets you there, but the creator is going to find a creative way to do it. Amen. So even though you're playing the same chords, uh, well, even though you're playing the same music, a creator's got to put a flash and a pizzazz in it because he, he loves to create. 
So, yes, he can, listen, a creator says, I'm going to get him to, he's going to be this man, this preacher for me uh, when he gets 40. He'll be this preacher for me. Uh, and the straightforward way would be he was raised in a good family, and they raised him up where he stayed in the church and loved the Lord and went on and became that good preacher and walked right up into it. That's the country way. The, a creator way would be to show you how good I am. I'm going to go over here. I'm, 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 I'm going to take him over here where his life looks like it's messed up. And, da -da 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 and I got him over here because it's not enough for him to go straight. I have to create. I'm a creator. And then he looks back on his work. That's why the Bible says when he said, let there be, and he looked back and said, it's good. He's a creator. I'm sure he didn't, I'm sure his, he didn't have to dramatically do what he did, but that's how creators are. Like a creator, when they sew a garment, they don't just make a shirt. Shirt. Straight shirt. Just No, they have to put some of this in there and a little bit of design because that's how a creator do creator creates. Now the problem is you're dealing with a creator. Did y'all hear what I said? You're dealing with a creator that gets joy in the difficulty. <laughs> the difficulty of creating. He likes the difficulty. It's the difficulty. <laughs> and this is why our lives is the way they are a lot of times because he could take you straight. But then that's not, a, that's not what, what glory is at. But a creator likes to sit back and say, they didn't even see that. They didn't see that. They didn't even see that. They didn't see that. All this, all this, all this. And I still summed it up and still came out to be what I said, even though all of this happened. That's the glory of a creator. Now, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because his joy Listen to me. His joy is to take chaos and bring something out. He, if you study Genesis, he wasn't creating. He was dividing. He was separating. Putting stuff back in his timing. He didn't create man. He took man out of. He took the iron. He didn't create dirt. He didn't create, he didn't create man as far. He took man out of what was there yeah. and brought it out. Of, he brought, it's, it, that's his joy is to take, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. This is why you should never think too less of yourself. Not think, don't think too highly, but don't think less. That's why the Bible says you was uniquely made, yeah. wonderfully made. Yeah. Because the mind of the creator uh, uh, of specifically, think about this. The Bible says the very, head, the very hairs on your head is numbered. That means you are so unique. He didn't give no, now, how, now listen, there's billions of people that's lived and lived before us, but not one the same. Not one. Not one. Not one the same. That's a creator that, that's so good that I can have billions of people never make a, never make a copy. Everything I make is an original masterpiece. Everything I make is, is original masterpieces. Are y'all there? Lord, let me get in this. Okay, look at Genesis. Look at Genesis. Let me, let me get in this. Look at Genesis. That's why you should never be depressed. You should never be depressed. That's why I don't be jealous of folk. I know who I am. I know what he made me. I ain't got what you got, but I understand how he made me. I enjoy what he made in me. And it ain't what you got, and I don't care about what you got, because I know that you could never be me. You could never, and I could never be you, and you could never be me. So I can be the best me that there is. So why am I trying to be you when I can be the best me? Nobody can beat me being me. He didn't make no more me's. Even my sons look like me, but they ain't me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why, why are you jealous of folk? Why would you even be jealous of people? Nobody can beat you being you. Look at this. Look at Genesis 1. Now, let me, let me get back. Look, so in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, 
That word confusion, mixed up. And void, empty, waste. And darkness. So void and darkness. You got that. Those go together. Amen. Was upon the face. So you got confusion, void, and darkness. You got that. Was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God hovered upon the face of the waters. So where are you seeing that there was earth there? Okay, so when he said let there be, he didn't create a, a, the, the sphere we know as this earth. It was already there. It was just mixed up. It was in chaos. Something had happened to this earth before. This is why uh, Christ said before the world was formed, Christ was slain. Before the earth was formed. See, Satan had already... Now, now, remember that during creation, you never know when Lucifer became Satan. We do know the Bible tells us that Lucifer was in heaven and he became Satan. He possessed the serpent in the garden. He winged the serpent. He possessed the serpent. So we do know somewhere in Genesis 1, Lucifer had already been the earth. Because it never says God created Lucifer or Satan. Satan was already here. Right? But what it doesn't say is when Satan became Satan. When did Lucifer become Satan? Where they couldn't be, it couldn't be during Genesis 1 because if it was, if it was during Genesis 1 that he became Satan, the Bible would have said that. He, became, he was already Satan before. So that means there was something here before. There was a world here before. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is the reason why and then what God, are y'all there? Before, before man, us, human, angels had dominion. They were the sons of God. They had the dominion of the earth. Satan was put over the earth to bring worship, and they were had the ones that had the dominion. They destroyed the earth. Chaos. They destroyed the earth. And Genesis 1 and 1 is God re, re, replenishing the earth and, and creating man who would give him this worship. Because the angel, that's why angels, remember it says in, I believe in, uh, 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 I want to say Job, when the, when the Bible says angels are saying, what is man that thou are mindful of him? What is this man? Why would you put him, why would you make, you made him a little lower than the angels. In other words, man, he gave man dominion where the angels failed. Why does the Bible say you're going to judge angels? Because they failed. He gave you dominion. Not all of them failed, but the, that system, that angelic system of his, of his first sons failed. And so he, he created another, he created another, uh, an, another race of sons called Adams. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? And gave them what? Dominion. That's why the Bible says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Said so I'm making another being that will, that I can give my authority and power to like this, these ones that fail. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is the reason why God told Adam, subdue, subdue. Why? Because even though, now you got to realize at that time, the, 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 the earth was not cursed. Remember, the ground was not cursed. So he wasn't talking about subduing uh, the, the earth in that way, but he was saying subdue. The word was saying, bring everything under your rule. Why? Because something was in the earth that wasn't under the rule of God. What was it? It was Satan that was in the earth. Amen. And that's why God put Adam in. Now, now this fight that we got going on, is, is, is the creator proving, proving to Satan he's just. I don't know if y'all getting this. He's proven to Satan he's just. By, by what? By creating a being with less power, less ability to see God, but yet will love God more than the creatures that we created to stand in the presence of God. This is the reason why every time uh, Satan is a, uh, 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 the Bible says that, uh, that, that it pleased God to bruise Christ because that's how God brags on you because Satan goes, well, remember when Satan went before God and said, Job only serving you because of what you're giving him. That's the only reason why if, if, if you took this away from Job, he would curse you to your face. That's the war between God and Satan. And God is saying, are you serious? Go on and do it. They, 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 these people see dimly. They don't even see me. But I'm so good. Right. 
I'm so good that that Satan, you had to see to believe. I'm so good that I'm a creator being that don't see but believe. They won't be able to fly. They won't have the power of, 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 of eternal life. They will actually die and still believe me dying. Because I'm going to prove I'm a just God. So this is the warfare that we have with, with this is what this is really the battle. It's God is showing Satan I'm, I'm good. Because Satan is indicting God, saying you're not a good God. You got to realize in Genesis 6 when those fallen angels fell, uh, in, 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 in the book of Enoch, they was, those, those fallen angels were saying how uh, they, was, they told Enoch to go to God for us and talk to us, talk to him on our behalf, tell him we're sorry after they done already corrupted man and created that race of giants called the Nephilim in Genesis 6 which is why the flood came to destroy the fallen angels that went and had sex with women and created another race, another race of beings, which is what Satan is really busy doing, creating his own race to destroy the humans. In other words, the dispensation of man. You had the dispensation of angels. They, they failed the dispensation of man. Now he's coming with another race. But what's coming is the dispensation of our Christ, where we'll be Christ men. That's another, that's another teaching, that's another. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? So what, what Satan was busy doing was, is, is trying to, is trying to, the reason why he deceived, did you ever think about how did he deceive one third of the angels? How did he deceive them? What did he do? He accused God of not being just. He accused God of not being just. And so that's why the Bible says a lot of those angels are reserved in chains to the last days. Until what? Until this creation that has less power than angels live out this serving the Lord without all of this power, glory, and still. And at the last days, God is going to look at you and say, they served me. They did it. They did it. You could have did it. They did it. They didn't have what you had, but they did it. They made it. Because if he didn't do that, then they would still accuse him of not being just. That's why they, that's, that's the reason why Satan kept on saying, God, they only serve and Job only serving you because you're blessing him. So God, the, a creator in his infinite wisdom is calculating, okay, I'm going to show you because I'm a creator. I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going I'm, 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 because all things got to work together for the good. So I'm going to put this in there like, let this happen, let this happen, let this happen. I'm going to let the, the, the trauma, destruction, no mother, father, the, the, the crack, all this coming in their life and destruction and rape and molestation, abuse and uh, 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 destruction and then no education and, and being born black and right off back of slavery. And at the end of their life, when they breathe their last breath, they're going to be serving me. Why couldn't you serve me? When the Bible says Lucifer was made beautiful than anybody, all the pipes and the glory. Of course you can serve God like that. Of course you can serve God when you got diamonds and emeralds built into your body. You the beautiful thing that ever lived. But he says, I'm going I'm 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 to make, make man a little lower than y'all. To show y'all. As I sit here as God, watching my, my plan of creation come to pass. Oh. And this is why your rewards come for your suffering. This is where he gives you your real glory and points from. Your rewards, your crowns. Because it's not, you think it's your works, but it's not. It's your suffering. Because that's the thing that separates you from angels. I'm blessing myself. This is what separates you because the Bible says the angels desire to look in on. Yes. 
they trying to figure this out. Like, man, these guys don't even, we behold his glory. Angels are saying, we, we can see the throne. We behold him. We see the glory. We got power. We got, the cherubims got six wings. They fly. Look how beautiful we made. We stand in the glory of God. What is man? What is man that, 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 that they don't even behold you? And this is the reason why, listen, this is the reason why Jesus is so powerful. Because he said, in order to really, really redeem man, I got to be man. So the Bible says that Christ was in that's why I remember in, 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 on the Mount of Transfiguration, and, and Jesus said, glorify me with the glory. No, when we was great, he said, glorify me with the glory I had before. Glorify me with the glory I had before. And John saw it. I mean, uh, Peter saw it. He, tra he transformed into this beautiful creature. Him and Moses and Elijah were standing there talking. And he see this beautiful, like the glory he had before. And he said, well, I, give up. I had to give up all of that. Because Satan's, so Satan's indictment of you, of, of you, almighty God, is the only reason that I love you. Wow. It's because you gave me all of this. Wow. But if I only loved you because you gave me all of this, then you ain't who you say you are. You ain't good. But if you take all of this, wrap me up in sin, the flesh of sinful man. And so the Bible says... That when Christ was getting, in Isaiah says, when Christ was getting whooped and beat, the Bible says it pleased God to bruise him. Because God was saying, I told you. I told you he would serve me no matter what. And Satan was standing there saying, he going to deny you. He going to deny you. Watch him deny you. He gonna deny. He ain't went through this pain. He ain't been through this level. He ain't had it like this. Oh, I tell you what. I'm gonna make all his men run away. Oh, he gonna be hurt when he get rejected. The Bible says that Christ had already seen it. He knew it was coming. This is why he was in the Garden of Gethsemane crying. Cause he understood. Like you mean I gotta go through all of this? But the Bible says for the glory that was before. That was before him. He understood the glory that was before, that was coming after this cross. That he despised the shame of what they did, stripping him naked and beating him and mess. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the Bible says that he got a name above every name based upon his suffering, because nobody suffered like this. <clears throat> so you not being rewarded for you think you being rewarded for. For, for your goodness. But Paul gave us a secret. He said, man, y'all, he said, you know, men always love strength and power. And this is what Satan understands and this is what men understand is power. And that's why they couldn't understand Christ because they didn't understand power. They didn't really understand power because they thought, see, they, they, they thought when the Messiah come, He's going to come in power. They didn't know that he would come yielding. He would come in humility. Basically, he would strip himself. I can't even say strip because look at this. Remember when Pilate was ready to kill Christ and he said, and he said, look, man, I can call 12 leaves of angels. No, 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 listen, 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 listen. It's one thing, it's one thing to have power. It's one thing to not have power. And then get beat and go through what you're going through. But it's another thing to have power and not use it. Like he was letting them know, now I can get up out of her if I want to. But for y'all's sake, I'm not going to use, I ain't going to work what I got. And that's what's, and listen, listen to me, listen to me. Satan knew he had it. That's why Satan was trying to say, make his stone turn into bread. Use your power. He said, no, 
I didn't come really to use my power. I came to show y'all how to obey. Because this, the power y'all think ain't going to save you. Obedience is going to save you. So I'm going to show y'all how to obey. And the Bible says Satan thought he was doing something. And then it says later on that if he would have knew what he was doing, he would have never crucified Christ. Because he would have knew that was the plan. Are y'all there? Now this is the reason why I can't let nobody talk me out of this God I know. I mean, I mean, I, 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 mean, I can't. I mean, they want to argue over. I ain't got time to argue with people. I got time to argue over that. I mean, you got. I ain't got. You can argue all you want to, whatever name you want to call them. That's what you call them, whatever you want to call them. But I, I know based upon, uh, the 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 witness of the of the Holy Spirit, that I'm serving the Christ. Now listen, I'm gonna tell you, I don't I don't really know it by the blessings. If you only know it by being blessed, you don't know it. You don't know it. Because that means you, you, you have a circumstantial God that you only know him when you're blessed. But I know him by the suffering. By when I, when, when, when I, when the, 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 the power, it seems, it's, it's almost a trip how you, if, if you really saved and you really been walking with God and you really filled with his spirit, you know, you know the power that is released when you accept, when you endure this suffering. You, you, know, you know there's power in that. You know the power when you got the, your leg is hurting real bad and you get up on it anyway and go on to church. You know, you see, it's hard to tell people that because they only know God if they didn't have no pain. That's the God they know, the God of happiness. Happiness is condition. That means something has to happen for me to be happy, happy and happy. But the God of joy is not circumstantial. That means. You could go right now to the, to the hospital and somebody be laying on the AIDS ward thanking God. And you will be sitting there saying the circumstance does not predicate. But they have moved beyond the circumstances of God or the circumstances of this world. And they've gotten over into true joy, which is not predicated on what I'm dealing with or what I'm going through or what I got. Because I understand that my God has placed me here to prove that he's good. And he can't prove it just through the, just through the blessing. It's a suffering side. That he gets more glory out of. Sometimes you think, is he a sadistic God? Because he seems to have joy in my suffering. But, but it, there's an invisible realm in the spirit that he sees gold being added to my account. He sees treasure. Every time I endure, he's in heaven bragging, oh man, look at him go. Oh, look at him go. That's why Paul said, to sum it up, that's why Paul said that I may know him. The power of his resurrection, which is where we only know him by. What he did for us. What he did for us. What he did for us. What you going to do for me. That's how we know him. But he goes on to say, but also in the fellowship of his suffering, meaning what I'm going to do for you. What I'm going to do for you, God, 
See, y'all got it backwards. Y'all keep only thinking that, yeah, he saved you and you got the benefits of what he did for you. But when you accept him, you're saying, what can I do for you now? Mean it. Now, 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 what is it that you signed up for? To be proven. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What did you sign up for? You signed up for God to brag on you. You signed up for God to bring you right in front of the devil and say, here he is. Here he is. Do, you, do, do what you got to do to him. Go on. Do it. Do it. I'm going to show you he loved me. He loved me. Go on. Do it to him. Go on. Mess his childhood up. Mess his mind up. Mess her mind up. Do whatever you're going to do. I'm going to show you they love me. I'm prove. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. 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 They're proving they love you. That's what standing before him is. You know, you know, Paul says, Paul said, Look, don't trouble me. I burn my body, the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. What he, he said, don't, don't, even, don't even come to me with that no more. Because this is my proof that I love him. It ain't your car, your house. It ain't that you got everything together. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't the proof, your big prosperity. The real proof that you love him is I didn't get that. And I'm still walking. And I got this scar. And I'm still walking. And I lost my mother, still walking. I lost my marriage, still walking. My child turned on me, still walking with him. They laid me off, I'm still walking. Lost my house, still walking. That's the proof I love him. You can't prove it with blessing. Oh, that's a good word. I said you can't prove it with blessing. And this is the reason why, you know, the Bible says that your trials are worth more than gold. Why do you think he's saying that? That's where your worth come from. It's worth more. When you look back and, and he show you, you know, see, you got to realize that, you know, I told you all this is all about Satan indicting God that he's not a good God. So by God being such a great creator, he says that, well, Satan goes to God and say, well, well, of course she's going to be great. She, she, yeah, she's going to be, I know she's going to be great. Look at what you gave her. You gave her mother to love her, father to love her. They had financial security and stability. She was raised in a good family, good home, and she didn't, she, you broke all the curses off of them and they was living in good they had wealth and money and she went to the best schools and raised up in church singing in a choir of course kept away from all that that's easy to add up that 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 oh yeah of course of course of course that's what saints have yeah of course they'll make it but if you're a real creator God then let's make it, let's see how, let's see how, let's see if you really can create. These are, let me see if you really can create. So let me mess, let me, let me, let me, let me take a mother away. Let's let her be born out of wedlock, curses already. Let's let the drugs come in, little cracker, little, little abuse, some sexual molestation. If you, are really, if, you, if you really are creative, you can still work this out. Let's, 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 no father, no identity. 
Uh, let me send this dude in her life at 13. She's going to think she's in love and let, uh, let's get her pregnant early. And let, if you're a real creator, even with this pregnancy, let's see if you can create her, make her be who she's going to be. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let her break her heart. Then she go in and out of that relationship with another dude and let me bring him along. And now she's depressed. Let's, let's let her bring his drugs in. Now, come on, let's let her get high for a little while. And all the time he said, are you the creator? Look at your creation. Ain't no way she going to be what you said she going to be. And God is sitting back, never worry, because he loved the challenge. He already knows. He just sits back and he said, do some more. He said, you done? Do some more. You don't believe this concept. But you remember when Elijah was going against the prophets of Baal and they all put the wood on the, on the fire? And then they was great. They was calling fire down. And Elijah said, oh, oh OK, put water on my on my on my wood. Put some more. Put some more. Why? Because God's got to show you he's great. Anybody can be great when it's great. But take away all the greatness and see if you can end up great. And that's where my worship comes from. When I look back over my life, my worship does not come from silver spoons because there were none. And it doesn't come from, 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 from everything being all right because it never was. My worship comes from the outcome. Did y'all hear what I said? I look at my life now and see that and when you sit back, it's where your worship come from. When you look back and say, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way I'm supposed to make it through that. And you look over to your left side and they died in it and they didn't make it and they didn't overcome. And you said, Lord, what was it about me? You had to have your hand on my life. Then when you get in church, ain't nobody got to hit the right song or the right key or the right note. You, you realize, oh my God, I got to give him. Hallelujah. 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 Got to give him glory. I got to give him praise. Ain't no way. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, son. Hallelujah. 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 Bye -bye. That's where your worship come from. You can't teach that. Ain't no revelation for that. You got to experience that to have true worship. When it dawns on you that in spite of, still made it. Hallelujah. Play something. Hallelujah. Come on, stand on your feet. I can't, I can't do nothing else. I can't go no further. Hallelujah. Play something. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. For, in spite of my chaos, in spite of the chaos, in spite of the chaos, I still somehow I still made it see Satan makes you look at your condition and circumstance but you know in the Bible the Bible says that Jacob was wrestling about his destiny his purpose he was tired of being a trickster and a con artist and he was on the run all the time Bible says that 
God showed up in the form of an angel and wrestled with him, struggled with him. Jacob fought so hard because he understood that this might be my only chance to change this situation. The Bible says Jacob fought so hard that the angel had to get serious with him and touch the hollow of his thigh and cause his hip to come out of place. The Bible says that once his hip came out of place, Jacob let him go. And the angel said, okay, now, now, now your name is no longer trickster or con man. Now your name is Israel. As Jacob began to want to rejoice in that name, he had, to, he had a new name with an injury. That's what it cost him. Yeah, he's Israel, but he's Israel with a limp. His weakness became his greatest strength. And this is the reason why we wrestle with God. Because we say, Lord, change. And he says, you really want me to change? You really want me to change? You really want, do you really want it? Well, then I got to give you a limp. That limp is going to be a testimony. Every time you want to be lifted up, you're going to be reminded of what it cost. Every time when I change your name and, 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 and they start calling your sister so-and-so, you're going to remember that domestic violence and you're going you're gonna to stay humble. When I change your name and lift you up and you become that great preacher, you're going to remember you was molested and I changed it. But, but, but it cost something. And what it costs is that testimony of saying, yeah, my name's Israel, but this is what it cost me to get that name. Because my, my glory, my strength is perfected in your weakness. That's why we thank God for our affliction. When David said, I thank him that I've been afflicted because if it wasn't for this weakness, I wouldn't know him. So Lord, today I say you can brag on me. Not for all the blessings, but because I didn't deny you. I didn't turn my back on you. I didn't quit you. When the whole world came against me, I stood with you. When everybody walked away, I stood on your word. I kept saying you're a good God broke. You're a good God and I got my lights cut off. You're a, you a good God in the dark. You're a good God with no money. You're a good God with nothing at all. You're a good God. Went to bed hungry and said you're a good God. I didn't let Satan indict you. I stood like Job in the midst of it and said, don't he slay me. Don't he slay me. Yet shall I trust him. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. I trust you, Lord. Come on, I trust you, Lord. I trust you. I know what the doctor said, but I trust you. I know what my bank account said, but I trust you. I trust you. Hallelujah. 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 And because I trust you, this too will work together. Come on, this will, this too will work together for my good. I see myself talking about my limp, testifying about my limp. I see myself giving you glory over this limp. Hallelujah. Oh, you ought to, you ought to just worship it for a second or two. 
Come on, worship him for a second or two. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. If you don't know the God we serve, if you're in here this morning, you say, Pastor Steve, I don't, I want to be right with God. I, I want to receive that joy that you was talking about, that, that joy that doesn't go off of how I feel or my circumstances. I want to be right with him. I want to know him on that level. If you don't know the Lord, you're not saved. And you want to get right with God this morning, I want you to come. Come now. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor Steve, I need. I need that strength from your prayer. And I want to receive that. I want you to come. Come. Hallelujah. Come on, we're just going to pray a prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, 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 every time I think about what do I have to praise God for I ride right past the corner I used to stand on and I see me I see, I see me through the lost faces of them guys that still standing there that don't know what I know I see me every time I look at the news and see somebody done got their life taken I see me and I give him a little thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That was supposed to be me. So if you don't know what God has saved you from, go walk the AIDS ward. Go out to Our Lady of Peace or Central State and see them out there talking to themselves, eating cotton, taking pills just to just to get just to live with their mind. If you don't know how good he's been to you. If you don't know the God we serve is good, go out to the prison and see guys in there hopeless with 50 years. It should have been you. That's where my praise come from because I know it should have been me. But through your mercy, you saved me. And I might not have everything in life or what I want, but thank God you didn't give me what I deserve. Hallelujah. You didn't even give me what I gave to others. I'm glad you spurred me from what I did to other people. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to pray. Father, I pray for those standing at this altar this morning. Father, I ask you to strengthen them. Strengthen them. Lord, there's an anointing in her that is strong. It's one of those mercy anointings. Where people are awakening to the mercy of God, realizing that if it wasn't for God, he was the lawyer, he was the doctor. He blocked it. He stopped it. It was him that did it. It's the mercies of God. It's one of them anointed to make you think about your friend that didn't pull through it. And you made it. We sat in the same place, did the same thing, and I made it. He's good to me. Father, I would ask that you would open their eyes and show them all of your goodness. 
all of your goodness how good you've been to them Lord they don't even know how great you've been how many doors you have opened and doors you have shut how many people you have sent out of their life and how many good folks you sent into their life even in the affliction you was right there being the good God that you are Father I ask you to strengthen your people this morning let them pull on you this morning and realize that you just want a relationship with them you just want to be close to them you just want to be near that's why you spurred their life so you could be the Lord I thank you father I thank you father this morning I want y'all to pray this prayer say father in Jesus name I believe I was spared for a reason your mercy spared me for a reason now I submit to your will whatever you want me to do build my testimony use me use me for your glory I give you all the praise and all the honor in Jesus name give him praise come on give him praise praise him right where y'all praise him praise him come on praise him praise him hallelujah come on praise him right where you are don't stop praise him hallelujah Lord, you're Lord, you're Lord. Lord, I love you love you love you love you love hallelujah Woo. Lord touch each one with your Holy Spirit those that are open to receive it, fill them with your Holy Ghost. Fill them till they run over, run over, run over. Run over, run over, run over, run over, run over, run over, run over. You said out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let them run over with your spirit this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now let the Lord use you. Turn and give somebody a great big hug. Find somebody, give them a great big hug in the Lord. Hallelujah.